Hello everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series. We got Jack Sorensen, wide receiver at Miami, Ohio. Jack, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Yeah, I'm excited. I appreciate you having me. Great to have you on as the summer series continues here. I want to start off just real early in your career, real basic. I mean, do you kind of recall what your first memory of football was? What kind of got you introduced to the sport? I think it was just all my friends. You know, I think mm-hmm. all my friends are doing it, and you don't want to be that oddball out that's not doing all your friends in the neighborhood are doing. So I signed up for it, and um, you know, loved it. I yeah. up, but I think right guard. So. <laughs> Jeez, wow! A little bit of a little bit of a change. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a change right there. Yeah, um, yeah from right guard to receiver. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. I don't think we've had any guy make that drastic of a change right there, so you might be the first one. Um, and, I mean, when you're growing up... In sixth grade, you can play anything. Oh, yeah, I know. Sixth grade out on the out on the playground, you know, during recess, you you really get your fair share of positions there, I'd say. So, getting all the experience that you need. But, um, I mean, when you're growing up, I know you said all your friends are kind of playing and stuff. Was college football ever the goal? And, and I mean, was it kind of just a hobby growing up? Or did, when did you kind of realize, you know what, I might actually be able to make a career out of this? Yeah, I mean, I think it was one of those things that you never really think about. Like, you always think about, as a kid, like, the dream is going to the NFL, you know? Mm-hmm. But you never really think about, like, college football being one of those steps. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I think when you're so young, you just have these dreams of, like, oh, they just made it to the NFL, but you don't really think about how. Mm-hmm. I never really thought about college football until probably middle school, late middle school. Um when things started getting more intense and you kind of had to go start specialized training for speed and agility, for running routes, for doing all these things that um, will prepare you, you know, to mm-hmm. start playing the way that coaches want you to play. And I think that's when I started actually thinking about it um, and realizing that this is a step that I have to take um, if I actually want to, you know, achieve my goals. So mm-hmm. it's probably late middle school. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in high school too, you made uh, a, a huge stride here. I mean, as a junior, you were first team all state. You helped your team to a state championship. Uh, as a senior, you played quarterback. You know, going back to you getting your fair share of all the positions here. I mean, right guard, quarterback, wide receiver. Uh, you threw for eighteen hundred yards and fourteen touchdowns. So you obviously had talent at both positions. I mean, what made you kind of decide on going with the receiving route? You know, in your college career. Um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily um, a choice that I made. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be um, uh, a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And so it just so happened to play out that when I got to um, college, actually my junior year of high school, uh, when I got the shot to play wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the year that you get recruited in high school too. So it kind of just worked out. I always wanted to play quarterback. You know, just at a young age, they just pick the kids that can throw at the farthest. Mm-hmm. They put them at quarterback. And that's kind of what I got stuck with. It was a great position. I loved it. But I always wanted to play receiver. And it just kind of so lucked out that the year you get recruited, um, junior year, uh, I, ha- I had to play wide receiver to be a really good quarterback ahead of me. I'll tell you what. I mean, so. the receiving choice, pretty good option. You've had a great college career so far. I always like to ask this. I mean, coming out of high school, what kind of made you choose Miami, Ohio to continue your career? Yeah, so I, ha- I had some offers all throughout the MAC and academy schools and a couple Ivy League schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a combination of a couple things, or mostly two things. Um, it was kind of looking into my future, what would give me the best opportunity to um, reach my goal of playing the NFL, but mm-hmm. also uh, set me up for success after football ends, because it doesn't matter, you can become a Hall of Famer. At some point, football ends, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so what would set me up the best for both of those things? Uh, in Miami, the business school is second to none. It's one of the best in the country. Um, and also their football tradition and the history of coming out of the NFL is one of the best in the MAC, or is the best in the MAC. So um, it was kind of a combination of both of those things made the choice pretty easy for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I know that's always kind of a tough decision, um, you know, trying to choose what college to go to. And you also have to look at the academic side of things, which obviously you did. Yeah. You realize, you know, the career will end someday no matter what. I think you brought up a good point. You could be a Hall of Famer. Football's still going to end someday. Um, and I know, you know, you redshirted and I've spoken to a lot of guys who have taken that same path. Very common for some guys, you know, it's the right decision for them. For some guys, it might be a little bit of a knock to their confidence, depending on the circumstances. 
you know, how, how'd you kind of stay in rhythm through that redshirt season in a year where you don't have action for, you know, quite some period of time? Yeah, so, you know, I think I actually lucked out during that redshirt season. So, actually, mm-hmm. right before the season started in fall camp, we had a couple quarterbacks get injured, and I actually got moved to quarterback my freshman year. Wow. Um, and they redshirted me. So, I was in the quarterback during my whole entire freshman year, and it gave me a whole year to understand the offense at a depth that you wouldn't have understood if I was just sitting there in the wide receiver room. You know, mm-hmm. I understood tracks. I understood uh, coverages. I understood fronts. I understood everything that was honestly way more – complex and way more than I needed to know at wide receiver but Mm -hmm. it gave me like the the foundation that I could build off of uh, once I went to the receiver room it gave me the foundation where now I knew how to run routes I knew where the holes were I knew what quarterbacks were looking at so I knew how to get open um, in our quarterback side so it helped me a lot it was tough definitely because you only I mean you come from being the guy at whatever high school you come to to being the low man on the totem pole Mm -hmm. but uh, I think um, it was definitely a check for me and it was one that I needed and I think any guy that gets redshirted, it's a really big, it's, it's a check just to, you know, it, it humbles you, I think, because mm-hmm. it shows you that, you know, you're you're really good, but you're not at where you need to be yet. You know, and mm-hmm. this year, if you can um, if you can see it as a positive, there's an opportunity to grow. I think the guys that see it like that uh, really take strides. Oh, yeah. I mean, you kind of get that outlook, as as you said, at the quarterback position. You kind of see see it from the perspective of a field general, and I don't think a lot of receivers kind of get that experience to kind of look at it from that perspective. So I'm sure that really did help you out. I mean, settling into college too. I mean, how was that for you? I know going from high school to college, you don't even have to be an athlete for the transition to be hard, but you have to balance football on top of it. So I mean, how was just making that move from your high school days to your college? Um, I think for me. Uh, the transition, or did you say the transition, like, athletically? Or, and, just, and you know, it can be athletically or just all around, kind of, you know, new place, new atmosphere, new environment, new people. I mean, just how was it for you in general? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, because I came from a pretty big high school, there wasn't mm-hmm. really a, too much of a culture shock for me um, from, like, the, the how big things were, or mm-hmm. the number of students, or uh, just that type of, that whole aspect of it. I think I was really blessed to go to a big high school, and have really good academics and all these different things. So the course load and uh, the intensity of the academics and all that wasn't too much of a culture shock. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I think was really, really hard for me um, was, I guess, to um, to understand how to play the game mm-hmm. um, at a different pace, uh, both mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. I think that was really different. For sure. For um, sure. Because I think, I think when you're in high school – so if, if you're getting recruited at Division I level, um, there's a sense of dominance that you can kind of uh, compensate mentally for the physical gifts that you have. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one thing that I didn't realize I was doing until I got to college. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's it's a much different pace and stuff, and you kind of got to get adjustment, adjusted to that. And I think you went into your redshirt season just kind of looking at it like that. You know, I got to get adjusted. I got to get ready you know, see how things are. So I think that definitely helped out. I mean, that's the best way to look at a redshirt season, I think, when you're making that that big of a change from high school to college. And I mean, 2018 and 2019 were great years for you. Back in 2018, you had 53 catches for 742 yards, a couple touchdowns. This past season, 44 catches for 568 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, no one really gets to that point without facing some adversity. I know you mentioned your redshirt season just getting adjusted, but have there been any, you know, moments of adversity, you know, physically, mentally, that you've had to overcome that really have stuck out to you as kind of a turning point in your career, something you really had to get over to get to this next level? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, junior year was such a whirl, or I guess you could say my, was it my redshirt, whatever last year or two years ago, like <laughs> yeah. the year before when the Mac, I don't even know, I don't even know all these, these <laughs> like redshirt sophomore year, I think. Um, but that year was such a whirl, or like a whirl, just because we had James Gardner, and then all of a sudden he was out, and then he was out for the season, mm-hmm. um, and he was our number one guy, you know, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden I had to come over and take that role, um, and I didn't really know how to take that role, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't really know, I didn't, I didn't really, you just never really prepare to be thrown into a position like that, mm-hmm. um, I think it's just something that you either rise or you don't, you know, and I, I was really lucky to have coaches and, um, 
and teammates that were that supported me and put me in positions um, to have a lot of success. And last year, I think, um, and that I think so. I think my sophomore year was very uh, was a really good mental challenge, just because mm-hmm. you're thrown into something that you're not prepared for, and you have yeah. to just figure it out. Exactly. Um, but last year, I think was very physical and mental. Um, in the first game of the season, I tore my PCL mm-hmm. um, versus Iowa, and I was out for four games. And then the first game back versus Buffalo, or my first full game back versus Buffalo, I tore a bunch of ligaments in my ankle in, like, the third play. So I was out for another couple of weeks. Um, so I really only played about six full games last season. Mm-hmm. And I think that just, you know, you come off having the year that you have, and then you're expecting – people expect it, you expect it – your teammates expect you, your coaches expect you to kind of dominate mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're just not able to. So how yeah. can you still dominate when you're not on the field? And I think what it taught me was is I can dominate, but it's just from more of a leadership role. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from a sideline role. It's from helping the young guys understand the offense, be confident, run routes, understand defenses. So you can be a behind the scenes leader. And I think that's what I really learned last year. That's a great great skill to have especially so early on in your career as a whole i mean college you know it's kind of those years where you want to be good you want to obviously get ready for the next level but at the same time you got to use it as a time to learn and stuff seems like you're absorbing a lot of good traits in your time at miami ohio i know you mentioned getting thrown into this position that you really couldn't prepare for. One thing I've loved about your game is you've been able to come up in the big games with big plays. I mean, in the MAC championship game, you had eight catches for 123 yards and a touchdown. You guys beat Central Michigan. You were named the offensive player of the game. Um, I know you also played in a bowl game, the Lending Tree Bowl, 10 catches for 107 yards. So between, you know, probably your two biggest games of the year, You go for 18 catches, 230 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, how do you kind of get in the right headspace for those games, get prepared for those games, and come up when it matters most? Yeah, I think that's uh, something different for every person. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was just so happy and grateful that I I got to play those games just Mm -hmm. the way the season went. You know, I didn't get to play a ton of games. Um, And I was just happy to finally be out there playing, uh, feeling healthy. Um, And so I think... Honestly, I played so well in those games because I was, like, missing it. You know, I was missing the game. I, I just wanted to go out there and have fun. I didn't mm-hmm. – I mean, I cared about the outcomes, obviously, because I want to win. And oh, yeah. I worked for four years to win. But also, like, when you're out there, you forget about that. You know, mm-hmm. you're just, like – it's almost like you're – you forget about all the fans. You forget about all the pressure. You're just like, holy crap, like, this is fun. You know, this is what, like, I love to do. And I'm finally doing it again. And then when you – I think when I play with that type of mentality is, like, this is just like what I love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then you're able to kind of do things that are like an out of body experience. Yeah. You know, like you can make those plays that you didn't think that you could, or that you needed to make. You know, mm-hmm. the pressure plays. So, you don't think about it too much. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a great experience too in those games. And uh, I feel, I feel like going in, you're probably a little bit nervous. Once you get out there, it's like, all right, I've been doing this game. I've been doing this my whole life. Just another game of football, and you kind of just settle in. Seems like you clearly did that. Um, so a couple of great games. Congrats on those. Um, I know I want to ask you too. I mean, you're heading into your final year of eligibility here. Obviously, it's been quite the journey just throughout your entire career, high school, college. Uh, what are you kind of looking forward to in your final year, your final season with, with your college team here? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like when you're a freshman in high school, you're like, Oh, cherish you. These are the fastest four years of your life. And uh-huh. I'm sitting there like, oh, shut up. <laughs> you're talking about I'll be here forever. And the same thing, you know, like you, you, you're you're done as a senior in high school. You tell the freshman, and you become a freshman in high school. Like, oh my god, I'm here forever. And then you're the senior. That's the only thing you're getting. Like, you know, cherish it. Like this goes so fast, and like I'm in that position. I'm in that place where I like just want guys to realize like the opportunity that millions of people would die for you know they'd give mm-hmm. their like w- left arm for you mm-hmm. know and we get to do it and sometimes you take it for granted so i think this year is just something this year specifically is just something that i, w- I just kind of want to live in the moment you know i think mm-hmm. like the ohio state game last year like i'm not myself so i didn't take a second to like look at where i was mm-hmm. you know and cherish the opportunity and like to be in that stadium to play in front of that crowd at iowa at the running triple you know like, 
this year, I, just, I really just want to create memories, you know, and like remember the experiences and times that I'm going to get because truly, like, I don't know what's going to happen after the season, right? Like, mm-hmm. I have plans and goals. Like, I want to play in the NFL. Will that happen? I hope so, mm-hmm. you know? And if it doesn't, this is going to be the last thing of football that I get. So mm-hmm. I really want to remember it and cherish it and build the memories and the, achieve the things that I want to achieve, and I got one more year to do it. I think it's going to be a great year. I mean, hopefully you guys just get started on time. I think that's the, the main thing people are <laughs> worried about right now, and I think that's a great outlook just to have, like, in life in general, just kind of valuing each day, valuing when it comes to football, valuing each snap. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to get caught up with not, um, you know, looking around sometimes, taking a step back, realizing where you are. And, I mean, as you said, with college, it just flies by. I mean, you don't really think about it. It just – it zooms by. It seems like a, a two-week process, but, you know, four years – can go by really quick when you're not when you're not realizing things. Um, I want to finish up here with three questions. Two are pretty laid back. Third one, you know, you might have thought about it a little bit, um, but we'll get to that. First one here. I mean, I saw you were related to Craig Council, Milwaukee Brewers manager. I go to school out in Milwaukee, so I uh, I catch my fair share of Brewers games. Um, growing up in Massachusetts, you know, I know they just signed Brock Holt. Uh, former Red Sox player, so I'm going to have to get out there a lot more this year. But I have to know, do you support the Brewers or are you repping another team here? I mean, you 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 got to be a Brewers fan, right? Yeah, I was born and raised a cheesehead. Is there anything, anything Wisconsin? There you go. Uh, is, is what I, in order to get room and board in my house, we had to do that. <laughs> so um, both my parents are from Green Bay and all of our relatives live there. It's just with the culture that I was growing up in. Uh, doesn't it, it helps a lot that Craig is the manager for it too. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just a cool coincidence. Oh, there you go. I mean that's perfect right there. I I can't get on board with you with the Packers though. I've gotten into a lot of heated debates <laughs> out there. I've gotten into a lot of heated debates out there between Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, that whole debate. We won't even get into that. We can we can save that for another day. We can save that for another day. Um, but another question I have for you here. I always try and ask, you know, a question similar like or similar to this with every interview that we do here on the site. If you could go out to lunch with any NFL player, past or present, they could be dead or alive. I mean, who would it be and why? Um, I think. Oh man, that's really good. I, I think. I think. Oh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be unoriginal. <laughs> I want to say like I want to say like Jerry Rice, but I don't want to say Jerry Rice because like that's what every receiver would say. Um, man, I don't know. That's a good question. It, NFL player? NFL player. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe Walter Payton. That's a good one. I know that's a weird spin because he's a, he's a Bears player. But I think it would just be really cool to understand his work ethic. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was anybody who ever had like the mentality and the work ethic that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to kind of meet the guy in the so it'd be cool to just bounce some questions off of him and hear what he has to say. Mm-hmm. And that'd be pretty cool. And and to see why he never wanted to get a chance to the Packers because the Packers were the better team. Oh, here we go. See, you you had to you had to throw the Packer shots in there. I I, I respect it. So, um, somehow I knew that sneak its way into the interview. Somehow I knew that would. So, you gotta love it. But um, I I will give you guys this though. Packers fans, some of the most dedicated fans that I've ever seen. So I'll give you guys that. I, that, huh? I will give you guys that. I like that. I have to give credit where credit's due, so I got to give you guys that one. Um, but yeah, I mean. To finish up here, if you could give advice to the kid listening right now who has dreams of playing D1 football someday, wants to set himself up for the NFL such as you have, I mean, what would that advice be? What advice has kind of gotten you through your career, and what have you kind of lived by to get to the point where you are at right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's this one's definitely going to be unoriginal, but um, I hope maybe coming from someone who actually isn't as talented as some of those guys that didn't make it, Mm-hmm. Um, I think I definitely think that you can outwork talent. Um, I definitely think that you can work with somebody else who has a lot of God given talent. Um, and I think that's what's brought me here, and I think that's what's going to propel me on to do whatever I do. Um, I might not be the most talented, I might not have the height, the speed, the agility, the ball skills, whatever it is. Um, 
but I'll put in way more field work than any of them, and I'll become better than them just because I'll outwork them. And, and I think that it, that that's just a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't choose to be you can't choose to have the talent that you're born with, but you can choose to work harder than somebody else and get that talent. So I think I, that's what that's the advice I'd give. I love that right there because I mean that that's kind of one thing I try and live by too. I mean, if you put your mind to something. You can really do anything, and and that is really true. I mean, you put the hours in, you put the work in, you can get to where you want to be. I think your career has been a great example of that. Been very successful throughout high school, through college so far. Coming into your last season here with a lot of momentum, but Jack Sorensen here on the site, wide receiver, Miami, Ohio. Jack, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to have you on. Great to talk some football, some Packers football, some Craig Council. It was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. We'd love to have you on again. Um, we'll put your Twitter down below so people can follow your season, your career, and we'll also put a link down to the Miami, Ohio football page so you guys can follow for news and updates if you want to check that out. But, guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Ed Sports Network, another interview of our summer series. We'll see you guys next time, and as always, take care.